In our world, there are many astonishing and inexplicable things. Many of them have been discovered by scientists, but their secrets remain unsolved to this day. In this video, I propose you to learn about the 15 most stunning discoveries throughout human history. Enjoy your viewing. In the forest near the town of Zavidovici in Bosnia, a stone sphere of impressive size was found. Its diameter is 1.5 meters, and the weight is approximately 30 tons. This remarkable find was discovered by Bosnian archaeologist Samir Osmanagic. The researcher believes that the mysterious sphere is not a miraculous creation of nature, but an ancient artifact of an unknown civilization that lived in the territory of Bosnia more than 15,000 years ago. This is indicated by the high iron content in its composition, a perfectly round shape, and proximity to the Visosika mountain. Osmanagic believes that Visosika is a real pyramid, similar to the Mexican Mayan pyramids. Therefore, he conducts many of his research in this area and hopes that the sphere will help him find another pyramid and many ancient artifacts that prove his theory. Interestingly, the one and a half meter sphere was not the only stone sphere found in Bosnia. Similar spheres, but of smaller diameter, were discovered in Maglaj and throughout the territory of Zavidovici. Local residents believe in the power of these spheres and think that it is thanks to them they have strong health. Scientists have their own theory about the origin of such spheres. They suggest that the round objects are iron concretions, formed during the compaction of sediments in coal deposits. Over time, the layers turn into a ball, as the substance is equally deposited in all directions. However, this theory, like the theory about ancient civilizations, remains unproven. Plane in the jungles of Papua New Guinea. In 1972, during helicopter exercises, employees of the Australian Royal Air Force accidentally noticed that a plane was in the Agayimbo swamp. When the find was thoroughly studied, it turned out to be an American all metal, heavy four engine bomber, B 17 Flying Fortress. These planes were produced from 1936 to 1945. During World War II, they were used by the Royal Air Force of Great Britain and the U.S. Air Force. Their main purpose was the daytime strategic bombing of German industry. The B-17 found in the jungles of Papua New Guinea had been there since 1942. Then its captain, Frederick Fred Eaton Jr., was forced to make an emergency landing after the plane was attacked by enemy fighters. The entire crew of nine people survived. Luckily, a month after the crash, the captain and his team were spotted by one of the locals who escorted them to his village, from where they were able to return home soon. It's normal. Oh. Surprisingly, despite the damage received, the plane did not undergo severe corrosion. It is now in the Pacific Aviation Museum in Pearl Harbor. By the way, the plane got the nickname Swamp Ghost because during the rains, the aircraft lying in tall grass was almost impossible to notice. In 2003, in the abandoned city of La Noria in the Atacama Desert, Chilean artifact seeker Oscar Munoz discovered a mysterious white bundle inside which was a strange mummy. The creature resembled a human but looked much more like a humanoid. The mummy was only 15 centimeters tall, its skull was elongated, and instead of 12 ribs, it had only 9. Its incredible resemblance to aliens brought popularity to the mummified creature, which was eventually named the Atacama humanoid. Scientists from Stanford University began to study the mummy in hopes of confirming that it actually belongs to a representative of an extraterrestrial civilization. However, the DNA analysis results showed that the Atacama humanoid is a human, specifically a female child who died shortly after birth. The girl had multiple mutations, which made her look very much like an alien. Her mother was Chilean and, most likely, she left the body of the child, wrapped in white cloth, in the desert no more than 50 years ago. Atacama is one of the driest deserts so the body left under the scorching sun was naturally mummified. 
It would seem that the mystery of the Atacama humanoid has been revealed, but some scientists continue to doubt the reliability of Stanford University's research. In 1901, near the island of Antikythera in Greece, wreckage of an ancient ship was found, which contained many artifacts, including a strange mechanism consisting of a main body and gears. Only in 1951 did this object pique the interest of English historian Derek de Sola Price, who speculated that the mechanism was a computational device. Price set out to study the mechanism in detail, it took him more than 20 years to recreate a copy of the device and conclude that the artifact was an astronomical instrument capable of modeling the movements of the Sun, Moon, and possibly also Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Another 40 years later, English mechanism study specialist Michael Wright confirmed Price's conclusions about the purpose of the device and also added that the mechanism is capable of modeling the movements of Mercury and Venus. Moreover, modern technology has allowed it to be determined that the device could perform arithmetic operations and account for the ellipticity of the moon's orbit. The Antikythera mechanism astonishes with its complexity. It could even predict certain celestial events. The technology of this device is comparable to the technology of the mechanical clocks of the 14th century, despite the fact that the Antikythera mechanism itself was created in the 100 S BC. In 1974, a unique sculptural composition was found by a Chinese farmer to the east of Mount Lishan. The Terracotta Army is sometimes called the Eighth Wonder of the World, and this title is indeed justified. The Terracotta Army is a colossal creation of art, consisting of 8,100 soldiers, archers, and chariots in full battle gear. Each of the sculptures is made in full size from clay, fired in a kiln. All elements of the composition were created by hand, and none of the statues were repeated. The weight of the human sculptures was about 150 kilograms, and horses were more than 300 kilograms. The most amazing components of the structure are the chariots, made of bronze and adorned with silver and gold. Each of them consists of more than 300 separate parts. The terracotta warriors stand one after another, their faces pointing east, exactly in the direction from where enemies most often attacked the country. Surprisingly, the composition maintained the order of a real army. In the first row were infantrymen, followed by cavalrymen, archers, officers, and commanders. In addition to the statues of warriors, clay statues of high-ranking people, birds, and animals were also found. The idea of creating a clay army belongs to the first emperor of the Qin dynasty, Qin Shi Huang, who ruled from 245 to 210 BC. From his 13th year, he decided to build his own tomb. According to his idea, the terracotta warriors were to accompany him after death. Over 700,000 workers and craftsmen were involved in the construction of this wonder, and work on the composition lasted for 38 years. During severe drought at Lake Vidostern in Sweden, a local resident named Andy Vanacek was setting up buoys near his home to warn boats about the low water level. His eight-year-old daughter, Saga, was helping the man. By chance, the girl noticed something that looked like a sword hilt at the bottom. Having lifted the strange object, she realized she was right. Together with her father, they gave the sword to specialists from the Jan Koping Museum for study after which it turned out that the artifact belonged to the Vikings, and its age is about 1,500 years. Despite its antiquity, the sword was well-preserved. Now experts are working on its restoration, and in the near future it will become a museum exhibit. After the sensational discovery by the little girl, researchers began to study the area near the place where the discovery was made. And not in vain. A brooch was also found at the bottom of the lake, the age of which coincided with the age of the sword. However, it remains unknown how the sword and brooch ended up at the bottom of the lake. On the night of March 28, 2020, residents of the large Nigerian city of Akure did not get a good night's sleep. 
The cause was a massive explosion near residential buildings. As a result, more than a hundred houses were seriously damaged. When rescuers arrived at the scene, they saw an incredible giant crater with a diameter of 21 meters and a depth of over 7.5 meters. But what caused the explosion remained unknown. Local officials informed citizens that the crater was formed as a result of a truck carrying explosives that were headed to a neighboring region. However, no traces of ammunition or military equipment were found at the bottom of the crater or its surroundings. Moreover, the explosion of a truck certainly could not have caused such a large crater. Therefore, people refused to believe this statement. Another possible cause of such a powerful explosion could be the fall of a meteorite. According to astronomers and geologists, a large meteorite passed through the atmosphere at a speed of over 85,000 kilometers per h and hit the Earth at an angle of 43 degrees. This assumption could be truthful. As it turned out, NASA indeed expected that a meteorite would fall to Earth in March-April 2020. Companions of this meteorite were asteroid 2012 XA, up to 400 meters in diameter, and asteroid 2020 FJ4 up to 10 meters in diameter. They passed by Earth on March 26th. Interestingly, this incident was barely reported in the media, apart from the first version of the truck explosion. In Central America, near the Yucatan Peninsula, Mexican researchers discovered a multitude of artifacts belonging to the legendary Mayan civilization. Incredibly valuable finds, some up to 10,000 years old, were found in Mexico's largest underwater cave, Sac Actun. Deep underwater were human and animal remains, among the most unique were bones of ancient sloths, bears, and gomphotheres, which existed before the start of the Ice Age. According to scientists, this cave was a kind of trap into which neither animals nor humans could escape once they fell. In addition, fragments of ceramic dishes, wall engravings, and religious objects belonging to the Maya were discovered at the bottom. The Sac Actun cave has not yet been fully studied as it connects to another underwater cave, Dos Ojos, and their total length is about 350 kilometers. It's quite possible that Sac Actun is also connected to three other underwater caves, which would further complicate underwater research. Modern technology allows the study of found artifacts without removing them from their natural environment. However, at the moment, scientists are focused on studying the biodiversity of the cave which is filled with low oxygen waters, allowing for age analysis of the finds with minimal error. For scientists, the discovery and study of this cave is very valuable, as it will help to better understand the culture of an ancient civilization. Researchers have even dubbed Sac Actun the mother of all cenotes, natural caves filled with water. The Maya were a very religious civilization and believed in life after death. According to their beliefs, such caves were a kind of gateway to the realm of the dead. It's quite possible that, in fact, Sac Actun was not a trap, but a real burial ritual place, leading the dead to the world of the dead. On November 18, 2020, a group of American biologists from the Department of Environmental Protection flew by helicopter to the desert area of Utah, to track the population growth of wild rams. During the flight, one of the scientists noticed a strange object shining in the sun. Soon, other scientists arrived at this location to unravel what it was and where it came from. It turned out that a metallic column, about 3.5 meters high, was located at the bottom of a mountain fracture. Researchers named it the monolith, after the monolith from the movie 2001, a space odyssey. Placed on Earth by extraterrestrials. News of the discovery of this interesting object caught the attention of many internet users, but finding its exact coordinates was not easy. The first person to succeed was a man named David Zerber. However, when the man arrived at the location, he found that the monolith had disappeared leaving a trace on the ground. Immediately after the monolith disappeared from Utah, its twin brother appeared in Romania. 
From that moment, metallic objects began to appear in different corners of the world. Within just two weeks, monoliths were discovered in California, the Netherlands, Germany, the UK, Spain, and even Colombia. Interestingly, they all disappeared after some time. The metallic monuments are considered some of the most mysterious objects on Earth, as their creator remains unknown. Among those who could be behind this idea was the American minimalist sculptor John McCracken, who passed away in 2011. He created similar sculptures and spent the last years of his life often visiting New Mexico. Perhaps he manufactured the metallic pillars in advance and asked his representatives to place them around the world a few years after his death. This theory was good, but later the artist's family denied his involvement with the monoliths. Miners from the diamond mining company De Beers had to drain one of the lakes in the Namibian desert. During the work, they found a well-preserved ship. It later turned out to be the Portuguese ship Bomb Jesus, which was heading to India in 1533. During a severe storm, a shipwreck occurred, as a result of which the ship was thrown ashore. Experts believe that there were about 300 people on board the Bomb Jesus, including wealthy people and their servants. The cause of the shipwreck was bad weather and severe overload. In the hold of the ship, an incredible amount of gold and copper products, more than 22 tons of copper ingots, thousands of gold coins and more than 50 elephant tusks were found. The total value of the found treasures is estimated at over $13 million. Interestingly, it was this territory of Namibia that received the name Skeleton Coast. Thick fogs, storms, and the cold Benguela current create incredibly dangerous conditions for ship movement here. Sailors who managed to reach the shore after shipwrecks were trapped on the coast in a drought-stricken desert. The total length of the desert along the west coast of Africa is 1,900 kilometers. Therefore, surviving here after a shipwreck was almost impossible. Another amazing discovery was made in southern Norway near the city of Halden. Archaeologists, studying the area with a special ground-penetrating radar, noticed a 17-meter object under the ground that was shaped like a ship. Upon closer investigation, it turned out that a ship over a thousand years old had indeed been buried right under the agricultural lands of one of the Norwegian farmers. According to archaeologists from the Norwegian Institute for Cultural Heritage Research, the ship was used to bury a rich and influential Viking warrior. However, it remains unknown whether there are any human remains and artifacts inside the ship. Now scientists intend to begin excavating the ship. Its study will help shed light on previously unknown Viking burial rituals. Just imagine how surprised a resident of the Turkish province of Nevsehir was when he discovered a mysterious room during the renovation of his house. Going inside the room, he entered a long tunnel which led to an eight-level underground city. Later it became clear that directly from the man's basement, one could get into one of the deepest ancient underground settlements, the city of Derinkuyu. The deepest of the eight levels went underground to a depth of about 85 meters. Inside, the city consisted of many tunnels, which had everything necessary for a relatively comfortable life. Residential premises, shops, food storages, stables for livestock, and much more. The city also had a ventilation system. Derinkuyu could accommodate up to 20,000 inhabitants and protect its residents from enemy raids. The exact date of the city's foundation is disputed among scholars. According to the Ministry of Culture of Turkey, Derinkuyu was built by Phrygian tribes in the 8th to 7th centuries BC. According to another version, the city was founded by the Indo-European Hittite people in 1900 to 1200 BC. In 2018, Indian scientists made an astonishing discovery. They managed to find the oldest tools that forced anthropologists to completely change their hypothesis about the technologies of ancient humans. Until that time, 
It was believed that hominids living in the territory of modern Indostan stopped using primitive tools only about 140,000 years ago. However, the age of the found tools was over 385,000 years. The discovered flakes, scrapers, and knives were made using Levallois technology. This method involved making lighter and higher quality tools from a pre-selected blank, from which fragments of future tools were chipped off according to a preconceived shape. The result was rounded or pointed flakes that could be used as tools immediately or after minimal finishing. The tools from Indostan are currently the oldest found in Levallois technique. Previously, these were considered to be tools found in Morocco at the Jebel Irhud site, which are 300,000 years old. Paris is rightly considered one of the most romantic cities in the world. However, what lies beneath it can shock any tourist. One of the most frightening attractions of the French capital is the Catacombs of Paris. This place consists of vast tunnels that hold the bones of over 6 million people in an area of 11,000 square meters. Now the population of Paris is 2.2 million people. Just imagine that the number of remains buried in the catacombs exceeds the living people in the city almost three times. And this is truly impressive. But how were these tunnels formed, and where did so many bones inside them come from? When Paris was just being built, there were quarries in its territory. The catacombs expanded geometrically, and the city grew along with them. As a result, many districts of Paris were above the tunnels and were at risk of collapsing. Thus, in the late 18th century, several mass graves at the Cemetery of the Innocents sank into the ground. As a result, the bones ended up in the basements of some houses, which further complicated the environmental situation in the city. In connection with this, the authorities of Paris decided to create an ossuary in the catacombs. Many cemeteries were closed, and human remains were transferred to underground tunnels after disinfection. Now the catacombs are partially accessible to tourists. The total length of the tunnels open for tours is 1.5 kilometers, and the entire route is designed for 45 minutes. In the early 1990s, a Buddha statue the size of a seated person was sent for restoration to one of the Chinese museums. During the work, restorers discovered human remains inside. Thanks to scientific research, it became clear that a mummy of a person about 1,000 years old was inside the statue. According to scientists, the remains belonged to a Buddhist monk named Liu Kuan, who practiced the tradition of self-mummification. Such a ritual involved a person's complete renunciation of all worldly goods. In other words, to achieve true repose, Lu Quan spent most of his time motionless in the lotus position and adhered to a special diet until he died. As scientists believe, the main priority in Lu Quan's diet was the refusal of cereals. Instead, the monk ate nuts, berries, pine needles, bark, and tree resin. Gradually, the diet became as strict as possible, resulting in the body losing fat and moisture, and some of the herbs and leaves slowed down decomposition. This practice was very common among Buddhist monks, however. This was the first religious servant found inside a statue. And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Goodbye.